Alléluia. Alléluia to the King of Kings. Alléluia to the Lord of Lords. Amen. Welcome to the house of our Father. Beloved, good morning. Let us greet each other this morning with powerful song of love. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I can see over you the glory of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you. Start greeting each other with love, please. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I can see over you the glory of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. And I can see over you the glory of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please, family of God, let us take our Bible reading from Psalm 118, 1 to 4. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For his good, because his mercy endureth forever. Let Israel now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let the house of Aaron now say that his mercy endureth forever. Let now that fear the Lord said his mercy endureth forever. Amen. Alleluia, Hosanna. 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 Amen. Beloved, let us begin to test the Lord, our Maker, our Banner, our All in All. Father, we thank you this morning. For your goodness upon our life, your mercy, your love upon our life, we say thank you. Father, you are great. You are good. There is no one like you, O oh Lord. Your mercy endureth forever. Everlasting King, King of Kings. We come this morning to say thank you. Father, you deserve the glory, honor, and adoration. We praise your holy name. May your name be exalted forever and ever. Thank you for your mercy and your protection upon our family. Family of God worldwide. Upon the love of our daddy and our mommy and the entire family. Father, we bless your holy name. In Jesus' wonderful and powerful name we are praying. 
Amen. Family of God, let us go to the Lord this hour with total surrender and ask forgiveness for our sin. Father, we sin against you by our thought, our spoken word, in our heart, in our mind, consciously and unconsciously. Papa, by your mercy, please forgive us. We bleed for your mercy. Let the blood of Calvary cleanse us this morning. Psalm 51 said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Restore into me the joy of thy salvation and uphold me with a free spirit. Father, our deliverer, write our name in the book of life and take our name out of the book of condemnation. In Jesus' powerful name, we ask for forgiveness. Amen. Let us invite the presence of fire of God in our midst this morning for better revival and understanding. Holy Ghost fire, we welcome you. We welcome you in this morning service. Welcome. Welcome, Papa. Come and do your powerful work in our life this morning. Blessed Holy Spirit. Blessed Holy Spirit of God. Lead our spirit, our soul, in the way of fear of God. Let your fire begin to burn everything is not of God. Let the fire burn them out. Burn them out, O Lord. Divine wind of God begin to blow in this environment. Take away everything is not of God. Blow in our spirit, our soul for better crazy. Come and take total charge of today's service. Let it be a total transformation. Renew our heart, our mind. Don't let us go the way we came. Thank you, Divine River, our helper, for your healing this morning. In Jesus' powerful name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Beloved, let us begin to sprinkle the blood of Jesus. Who is the blood of covenant over this environment, over every corner in this sanctuary, over our soul, our spirit, our body, over all the chair in this house, over all the equipment, over our network. The blood that take away the sin of the world we call upon you this morning for better cleansing. Blood of the land begin to flow in every corner of our life and take away everything is not glorify your name. Blood of Calvary, locate any power in assignment against our service, our deliverance, our blessing in today's service. Look at them for total destruction in the name of Jesus. Any power in the second heaven, in this air, 
underneath the earth, in the water. I guess our service this morning. Be crashed and scattered in the name of Jesus. Be crashed and scattered in the mighty name of Jesus. Blood of Jesus, protect yourself and his family in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' powerful name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Family of God, let us pray this morning like never before. For our father and our mommy in the law in this mountain. Father, may your strength and anointing be upon your son and your daughter in this mountain. As Isaiah 40, 31 said, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Papa, renew their strength. They shall mount up with wind as ego. They shall run and not be willing. They shall walk and not be faint. Your mercy hand of protection will be upon them and the entire family in the name of Jesus. We are praying. Amen. Beloved, let us take our prayer point. Heaven over our service this morning. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the mighty name of Jesus. Heaven over our service this morning. Be open. Be open. Be open in the name of Jesus. Heaven over our service this morning. Be open. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' powerful name we are praying. Heaven over GPT ministry. Be open. Be open. Be open in the name of Jesus. Heaven over GPT ministry. Be open. Be open. Be open. Be open in the name of Jesus. Be open in the mighty name of Jesus. Be open in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Amen. Light of God. Shine upon GPT ministry. For revival in the name of Jesus. Light of God. Shine upon GPT Ministry Worldwide for revival in the name of Jesus. Shine upon GPT Ministry Worldwide for revival in the name of Jesus. Light of God. Shine upon GPT Ministry Worldwide for revival. For revival in the name of Jesus. Light of God, shine upon JPT ministry worldwide. In the name of Jesus, light of God, shine upon our lives today. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Good morning, church. I want you to declare upon your life this morning, that today, 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 the Lord will do a new thing in my life. The Lord will do a new thing in my life. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. We are going to praise God. And this morning, we are going to sing a song. To worship God. Um, it's not really a new song, but maybe we are not familiar with the song. So I'm going to sing it. It's a very easy song. And you are going to sing after me. Hallelujah. Amen. Father, we worship you this morning. Jehovah, as we praise your holy name, Spirit of God, come and take your absolute place. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your name be praised. 
Let your name be exalted. Let your name be glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are the great, the great I am. We praise your name forevermore. Do we get it? Very easy. You are the great, the great I am. We praise your name forevermore. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We worship you, Jehovah. Yes, you are the great I am. I will sing it again. You are the great, the great I am. We praise your name forevermore. Then the second verse.
head and worship him. Yes, worship the one who is great I am. Worship the one who is the Almighty. Worship the beginning and the end of all things. Father, you are the Alpha and the Omega. We are Lord, you are holy name. We glorify the great I am. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Just go ahead and worship him. Worship him is worthy. Father, you are worthy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Immortal God. King of kings. Lord of lords. Great I am. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit.
will lift up the name of Jesus today. Your hand will never be beneath. Our hands will never be beneath. Because we have lifted up our hands to worship the King of kings, the Lord of lords. From this day forward, our hands shall be at the top and never beneath. Yalima Makaliba Siriba, so shall it be. So it is by the power and authority in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praised God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Just lift up your hands and just give him glory. Father, you are Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are Lord Jesus. Ah, yes. It is a privilege to worship.
we're going to praise God by singing our hymn. I sing the first and the last stanzas of the hymn. Pass me not. I may praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Stanza one and the last one. gentle savior we have sang it two consecutive weeks last week and this week that means there is somebody here and I know I'm the one that the God of heaven and the earth the God of divine touch the God of divine encounter does not want to pass by so you are going to pray my father today in this service, do not pass me by. In the name of Jesus, Father, do not pass me by today. Do not pass me by today. As your word come forth, let it come forth with healing, with deliverance, with freedom upon my soul, upon my spirit. In the name of Jesus, 
Father, today, do not pass me by. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, almighty God, today, do not pass me by. In the name of Jesus, Father, today, do not pass us by. In the name of Jesus, mighty God, do not pass us by today. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Please have your seat. Uh, this is about the prosperity conference. It's coming on very, very strong. We thank God for all what he's been doing and in our lives and in the lives of the committee members also. Uh, the committee members are meeting as scheduled. Uh, there was a, a WhatsApp message sent for Tuesday 9 p.m. prompt. Uh, we hope that you all can be there and uh, support us. And also, um, I have the donation request memo ready. So after church, uh, the committee leaders, anybody who wants a copy, to make more copies, or if you want me to make you more copies, I'll be more than happy to do it. Uh, this is if you uh, want to give it to your boss or whoever that you think uh, is a Christian and willing to support our conference, uh, we are more than happy uh, to receive it. So it's available after church. And anybody uh, who wants to uh, invite a dignitary, please let me know. Um, I don't want, after the conference on um, uh, Monday, uh, somebody who said, oh, Sister Na, I wish you had told me. I know the mayor of Mer uh, D.C. I know somebody who makes clothes for her. I could have invited her or I could have asked you to invite her. So if you know of such person, we've invited a lot, but if you know of somebody, please let me know and then we can arrange and invite them officially. And also, um, these days, I know a lot of people don't check their mail or we have friends and family we don't meet every day. Now, if there's somebody that you want to invite, but you don't meet them every day or uh, occasionally to give them a flyer, if you call me and give me the person's email address, we can arrange an email, a copy of the flyer to the... Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Brethren, I want us to stand up and pray. We're going to pray. We're in the sanctuary of the Lord. So I want us to talk to the Lord. Ask God. Tell God what you want him to do for you today. Tell God as the message is coming, ask God to send his Thank word. You, Jesus. Father, send your word for me today. Send your word, send me. Your word for me send today in the name of Jesus. In the name of send Jesus. your word of restoration. Jesus. Your word of send healing word concerning of my situation. In the, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, send your word, put Thank your you, word in the heart, in the mouth of your son, oh God. Send your word for me, your Father, word of your restoration. Word. In the name of Jesus, let's open our mouth and pray. Oh God, our Father, send your word of power. Send your word of restoration to us today. In the name of Jesus, oh God, our Father. Send your word of restoration. Go put your mouth and pray loud. By the power in the name of Jesus. Oh God, my Father. Send your word of restoration to us. In the name of Jesus. Go put your mouth and pray. I can only hear one or two people. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh God, our Father. Send your word of restoration. Your word of power. To us today. In the name of Jesus. You want to shout that prayer very powerful. Oh God, my Father, send your word of restoration to my spirit, soul, and body in the name of Jesus. Oh God, my Father, send your word of power, of restoration to my life today in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. 
Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your blessings over my life and my family in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for your blessings over our lives and our family in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your blessings over our lives and our family in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for your blessings over our lives and our family in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for the life you have granted unto me and members of my family to witness another new week in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for the life you have granted unto me and members of my family to witness another new week in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for the life you have granted unto us to witness another new week in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. I nullify any evil dream I woke up with this morning by the blood of Jesus. I nullify any evil dream I woke up with this morning by the blood of Jesus. Be nullified 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 by the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Say, Lord Jesus, touch me with your fire. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, touch me with your fire. In the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, touch me with your fire. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Worthy, O Lord. To receive glory, honor, power, power, all power.
thank you for your mercies upon us, your provision, your care. Glory be to you. Thank you, Father. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we welcome you. We thank you. We bless you. We honor you. Take all the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Good morning, church. Let's clap for Jesus. God bless you for coming. The Lord is good. Please have your seat and welcome to the house of your father. I believe we are already blessed and more blessings shall follow in the name of Jesus. By the grace of God, our message this morning is titled, What can the power of the Holy Spirit do for us? What can the power of the Holy Spirit do for you and I? What can the power of the Holy Spirit do for you, do for me, do for all of us? I want us to understand, as previously taught, that the Holy Spirit is a personality. A personality meaning that he is existing as a God and a spirit. So the Holy Spirit is a God, a spirit. It's a he. We use a capital letter for him. Okay? I'm just using that word now. It's a personality like how you say she to a woman, to he to a man. So the Holy Spirit is a personality and a God or spirit to reckon with. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. So we have God the Father, our creator and our maker. God the Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and personal Savior. And God the Holy Ghost. And that's the third person in the Godhead. So, three God as one. He is our comforter. He is our healer. He is our best guide. He is our best teacher. So, I'm just introducing the Holy Spirit to you so that you will know him. He is the revelator of truth. The one who reveals truth to our conscience, to our lives, to our spirit. His truth being revealed to us is like light. He, 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 that light illuminates, enlightens all areas of our life and eschews our ignorance. And eschews or swallow up our darkness. So the Holy Spirit is a light. He is the God of illumination. It illuminates divine light into our heart. Why will he release this light? He knows there is darkness around us, around and within. So when we don't even want to accept it, he will release his light of the word of God into our heart for us to see ourselves. That's why the Bible refers to him as the revelator of truth. He is also the spirit of truth. The revelator of truth and the spirit of truth. Again, I repeat, the Holy Spirit is a God and spirit. is a personality. The third person of the Godhead. He is, I said, is a counselor, sorry, a comforter. He is also our counselor. He is a comforter, is a healer. He is the revelator of truth and the spirit of truth. He is the best guide and the best teacher that anyone can ever have. That's the Holy Spirit. Let's go to the book of Zechariah chapter 12. We are going to read verse 10. Zechariah chapter 12 verse 10. 
The Bible says, are we in Zachariah? Let me wait. It's close to the book of um, Malachi. Almost Matthew, before you get to the book of Revelation. I mean, the uh, book of Matthew. You will find Malachi before Matthew. Last book of the Old Testament. So, in between it is Zechariah. We are reading verse chapter 12, verse 10. He says, and I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for me, for him, as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for his first Born. That's a deep message there we need to go home with. Talking about the Holy Spirit as a personality, a God or a spirit. Now, the Lord, the Bible says, God says to his servant there that he is going to pour onto the house of David. And we are the seeds of David. And the, all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the spirit of grace. Look at that word here. The spirit of grace. Grace has its own spirit. The spirit of grace in this picture that God has promised to pour upon his children is the Holy Spirit. Why does it come with grace? Why does it come with grace? I want us to listen attentively so that we will understand. And what is grace actually? Family of God, grace is an enabling power. It's an enabler. Let's say for example... You are trying to be somebody. And you have put all effort to be what you want to be. And you are not becoming what you want to be. There's something God has released as an instrument. A divine instrument. To assist all his children. To be able to do things. And be able to become what they want to be. That instrument. Or that enabler. Is called grace. Grace. That is why we say grace is an enabling power. It enables you through his own divine energy and strength to be what God wants you to be or to fulfill your destiny. Can we take care of the children at the back? Let them be totally, total quietness there, please. Do we understand that now? Let, so, so you can see that grace, I want us to listen. Grace is an enabling word Power. What is power? Power is energy. Strength being put to use. When grace becomes your enabling power, it, it, the grace itself assists you and I to do what we cannot do. To become what we cannot become. To act what we cannot act. To be able to overcome things we cannot overcome on our own. So what, actually, what is grace on its own? What is grace on its own? Grace is favor shown to the unworthy person. Grace is favor of God shown to the unworthy without any cause or reason. There is no reason why we should be favored. There is no any cause from God why we should be blessed. But God in his infinite mercy releases his divine favor upon us even while we do not, we are not worthy of it. That is what we refer to as what? Grace. This grace comes from the bosom of the Lord as a free gift to assist us becoming what we, are, we, we cannot become on our own. What is this grace? 
Grace enables us to do and to be what we cannot do or cannot be. Grace enables you and I to do or to be what we cannot do or what we cannot be. Now, you want to do something. You want to do certain things in life. You put all the effort, all the connections, all the money, you still cannot do it. But somehow, you did not even put any of those efforts, energy or money, and those, those things were done. That was grace you have obtained. What the instrument God has given to human, enabling them to do or to be what they cannot do or cannot be. If left to us in our own means, if we are to be on our own, we will not do it. We will not be able to do it. No matter how we try. If we are on our own, we cannot get it, uh, be it. No matter how we try. Unless God in heaven allow grace to such person, that is when we are able. How many of you were able to wake up by yourself this morning and you beat your chest that you were actually the one that gave yourself life and you were alive to say today? How many of us? There is none. We were not able to wake up because we don't even know how we slept in the night. We slept, we did not know what is befalling us. We didn't even see the attacks. We don't know whether they were using something to chisel our part of our body. Somehow we woke up alive. When we do not even merit to be alive. The enabling power called grace from God made that possible. Are we understanding now? So we all need an enabling power in our Christian race to be able to succeed in everything we do. And grace is that enabling power. The Holy Spirit functions as an enabling power or as the spirit or the power of grace in us. The Holy Spirit functions as an enabling power or as the spirit of grace or the power of grace in our lives. That is why if you go back to Zechariah 12.10 God says, I will pour out to my children the spirit of grace. God is saying he's going to pour into you and I the Holy Spirit. So anytime you see in the Bible the spirit of grace is referring to who? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is an enabling power. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of grace given to us when we do not merit it. We are unworthy of receiving it because we are sinners. And through the, through the sheer mercy of God God releases that spirit into us. Now, when the spirit of grace is given to you, you are not in control of it. It controls you and I. When we release ourselves to him, it takes charge of our lives, of our needs, of our worries, of our feelings, our concerns, anxiety. It rules our lives. It controls our lives and directs us according to the will of God. I want you to understand this word that I just mentioned now, the spirit of grace. I told you grace is the favor of God given to an unworthy person. So now, the spirit of grace is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost functioning with an enabling power called grace. Being given to you and I that we do not, uh, we, we, we are not worthy to receive because we are all sinners. Now that Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Grace, is given to us to be able to do what we cannot do. Become what we cannot become. If we allow him to control us. If we allow him to direct us. 
So you can be a Christian and not allowing the Holy Ghost, which is the spirit of grace, to control you or to direct you. It means that God just pour out the spirit of grace upon you and you are not allowing him to direct the affairs of your life according to the will of God. Then you will notice such child of God will be going around a circle. Many of us, these are the things that we have been going through, going around, and we don't know that that is not how a child of God should perform with the Lord. There is no how you can call yourself a Christian, born again Christian, carrying around, the, uh, being a mobile carrier of the Holy Ghost, and the evidences or the blessings of the Holy Ghost is not seen in your life. Most of the time, you see, we pray and pray and we begin to wonder why is God not talking? Why are things not happening? Even after I've prayed, it's because you are the controller, not the Holy Spirit. You are the director, not the spirit of grace. The day you allow the Holy Spirit to start controlling your life, to start directing your life, you will now see that there are things you don't need to do by yourself. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to do it for you. Because the pouring of the Spirit of grace to us is for him to take charge of us, not we to take charge of him. That is why God sent him. We do not own him. We cannot make him. God in his grace releases it to mankind to come and control and direct and comfort and make our lives better. Now you ask yourself, since God releases or pour out the spirit of grace upon me, have I allowed the spirit of grace, the Holy Spirit, to control my life, to direct me, to speak to me, to help me in my weaknesses? If the question, I mean the answer is that you have not been allowing it, that tells you have to do a return, a change today of your life. Because after Jesus departed, after he finished instructing his disciples and those that were with him during this time, he promised them that my presence will no more be with you. But I will send a comforter who will reveal the truth to you, will guide you in all your weaknesses and help you to become what God has created you to be. Help you to achieve what you cannot achieve. He said, carry over the night for the comforter will come. Jesus became the baptizer of the Holy Ghost. He now poured out the spirit of grace. The first 12 were in the upper room. They got the encounter. The Holy Ghost came upon them after they received what? Power. They began to speak in diverse tongues. From that day, those who actually wanted to serve Jesus in fear were no more in fear. What happened? They began to speak boldly. Well, were, were, were they the ones speaking boldly? No. The enabler. I told you again, the spirit of grace is an enabling power. When it is upon you, it makes you do extraordinary things that will marvel you. It's not you doing it. It's him going through you to do the things of God according to his way. We need to start allowing him. That is why God pour it to all his children. That is why God wants us to take a full benefit of the spirit of grace he has given to us. We're going to talk about what can the power of the Holy Spirit do for us. Let's see another area again. In John chapter 14 verse 16. John chapter 14 verse 16. Bible says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. I said the Holy Spirit is our helper. Who was their helper before the Holy Spirit? Jesus Christ. Now, he was glorified. He died on the cross and went to heaven to be seated at the right hand of God. Now, he sent the third God the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Ghost. He says, he, he says, and I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. 
the Holy Ghost is coming to stay in us forever. Look at that. Look at 17. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. Now, the Holy Spirit does two things there. Those of us, by the grace of God, that have given our life to God and have received the free gift of salvation by faith, through grace. The Holy Spirit that Jesus prayed the Father to be sent to his children as helper will come to stay. The Holy Spirit comes to stay with you. Meaning you can feel his presence. The word with means he's going to be around you. Anywhere you go, he goes with you. Are you understanding that? You enter the toilet, he's with you there. You enter into a danger zone, he goes there with you. You enter ro- grocery, he goes there with the grocery store with you. You come to your bed, you are sleeping, the Holy Spirit is with you, around you. You can feel and notice his presence. That's one thing he does. And a- another thing, the Holy Spirit, this helper, will be in you. We are reading it here. Look at uh, 17. It said, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Yes, they cannot receive it because they have not given their life to God. Because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him. You that have given your life to God. He says, license. God has given to you in relationship to know him. So you know him. You experience him. You become a witness of Christ. True is enabling power working in you and I. For he dwells with you. He's around you. You feel his presence. You know his presence. When you enter a place that is demonic, the Holy Spirit announces his presence. You quickly know that this place is not a good area. And will be in you. Not only around you, but inside you. Why would the Holy Spirit be in you and I? Is in us to do something as an enabling power to do what we cannot do, to be what we cannot be on our own. And I said that enabling power is the gift of God's grace, and that is what they call the spirit of grace which is the Holy Spirit. Now look at this picture. The gift or God's gift of grace to to humanity, majorly to born again Christian, is the Spirit, is the Holy Spirit. Listen again. God's gift of grace God has his own grace. Are you, are you listening? I want you to understand so that you can be blessed today. When you understand this scripture, this word, this message, you will, your, the way you are operating as a Christian will change. And the way you pray. You will now know that all this while, 99% of your life you've been doing things on your own. Instead of you allowing the Holy Spirit. God's gift of grace is the Holy Spirit. The gift of God's grace is the Spirit. So God's Spirit is His grace. Do we get that now? God's Spirit is who? His grace. God's grace gave Jesus. To the world. To come and do what? God's grace gave Jesus. To come and do what? To die and to save us from our sins. The whole world. Is that not? And by the grace of God. Those, who have, those of us who receive the word. In spirit and in truth. And we surrender our lives. To God. We now obtain what? Salvation. Through grace by faith. That's when. We are happy for our redemption. This was only possible by God's own grace, which is his spirit. 
So, God's grace gave Jesus to the world. The same grace is equal in value and in importance that is on God. It's the same grace he put on his son, Jesus Christ. That is why in the book of John, chapter 1, I think 14 to 16, he said Jesus was the word that dwells among men as flesh. Remember Jesus was the word. The beginning was the word and the word was with God. The word, the word was with him from beginning. So Jesus was the word. But when he manifested among men, he became flesh. Bible says he was of the fullness of grace and truth. Meaning that God's grace is full. What he gave to his son is full. The gift of God's grace on God is full and of truth. Now, when he gave his son, when he, when he, when he sent his son to come and die, the same grace that is on God is on the same grace on his son Jesus Christ. Of the same value and importance. The same grace God gave on his son is the same grace he gave to the Holy Spirit. They are equal. Three of them work together as one. Now, the grace of God on God, on Jesus, on the Holy Ghost is of the same nature, the same power, and of the same glory. Now, out of the benevolence and goodness of the heart of God, he saw what he created dying. Out of his grace, his spirit releases his grace gave Jesus. Jesus now came with the grace of God to fulfill the will, the will of God to the dying soul. And that same grace of God was what took Jesus to the cross. Without God's grace on Jesus, Jesus cannot die. I want you to see why when you go out to do things on your own, you are trying to do things, you can't achieve it because you are not allowing the grace that God has been using to help his son and the Holy Ghost. We are Christians, but we don't understand how to operate with the grace of God. It's not possible to carry the whole world sin unless a divine grace is upon you. It was that God's grace on Jesus that allowed and helped Jesus to be able to say, I will give my life and carry the sins of the world. When Jesus was departing, he extended the grace of God to the comforter. You can see. It is that same grace of God that established the universe. That same grace of God was what provided a savior for the world. The same grace of God was what made available the comforter. So you cannot be a Christian without grace. You can't function or go far as a child of God without grace, without, an, without the grace of God. And that grace of God, I said, is what? The spirit of God, which is the Holy Spirit. We all need it to become what we ought to be here on earth. My prayer is that God will show us mercy and the Holy Spirit will come upon us in the name of Jesus. Let's see Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Are we understanding what we are saying? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. So you can see how many of us in the compartment of Christianity functioning without God. The spirit of grace or the Holy Spirit. You can't do anything without him. Acts 1.8 But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Which one will, will you receive first here? From that picture. Some Bible says after. You receive what? The Holy Spirit first. Then the Holy Spirit now caused the enablement. The enablement is called what? Power. See, the pouring of the Spirit 
upon the children of God is the pouring of the spirit of grace. When the Holy Ghost come upon you, it's the spirit of grace that come upon you. When you continue in the things of the Lord, it becomes an enabling power. That is what they call fire. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Power of the Holy Ghost. And it begins to assist us, to enable us to do things. I read that it again. It says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the earth. Before this comforter, this powerful force come upon them, they were very timid and fearful. They could not do anything. So, as a child of God, you can only do much for God if your graces or grace from the Lord is given to you. And that grace, I said, is the Holy Spirit. May we receive it today in the name of Jesus. Go to Ephesians chapter 2, 8, or John chapter 1 verse 14. To confirm what I just said about Jesus Christ full of grace and of truth. John chapter 1 verse 14. Are we there? It says, and the world became flesh and the world became flesh and dwell among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of Grace and true. That grace, I said, it comes from his father upon him, Jesus. What is in God? God release it on his son. And release it on the Holy Ghost. That is why we cannot be functionless. As children of God, we carry the power of God in us. His grace is replicates in us. Help us to do what we cannot do. Help us to do what? To become what we cannot become. That is why you see the 12 apostles were able to do extraordinary things. During their time, they shook the earth. Look at what most of us are doing now. Just look at your career now. If your career is absence of the spirit of grace, you're going to labor. If your ministry is absence with the spirit of grace, you're going to labor. If your business is absent with the spirit of grace, you're going to labor. If your marriage is absent with the spirit of grace, you're going to labor. And when God says, I pour the spirit of grace upon you, don't do it for him. Hand it to him. Let him control and do it for you. All you need to do is to present yourself. Say, Holy Ghost, use me. Lead me. Direct me. Control me. When you surrender yourself, I surrender myself to him. He begins to use us and lead us. His grace is increasing us to and empower us to do what we cannot do and become what we cannot become. Do we understand that? My prayer is that we will receive that grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 to 9. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. It says, for by grace you have been saved through faith. That is true. We are worthy of being saved. We are not qualified to receive redemption. But the fullness of God's grace and truth on his son Jesus after dying, make that way for us to be saved. Because we believed in him. And that's what they call faith. And that not of yourselves. For it is the gift of God. So the gift of God to us is the spirit of grace. Not of ourselves. The gift of God's grace to us is the spirit, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit. Not because we merit it. If the grace of God did not send Jesus to the cross to die, there can't be the comforter. There can't be the healer. There can't be the director of our life. There can't be the counselor. There can't be the best guide. There can't be the best teacher. There can't be the 
the revelator of truth and the spirit of grace we are talking about today. Look at now. Not of works, not because we are smart. Not because we can pray. If it is how to pray, many of us would have been billionaires. Or raise all the dead in any grief. Haven't we done all the prayer? Not because we are righteous. Is that not? Not of works. Not because we know the Bible. Lest anyone should what? Boast. Now look at this area. We are always doing the opposite of this world. Not of works, but instead we are of what? Works. Do you understand now? Hey, come to church. Come to church. Come to church. You say, no, I want to go to work. You are going to work. Grace is at the back. You are going to suffer. Uh, bring that problem of your marriage to God. He said, no, I'm going to sit with my partner and we'll talk this thing over. We will battle it. We will settle. Bring it to God. You are doing it of works. It's supposed to be for Christians. It's supposed to be not of what? Works. All your idea, how you know how to do it. God is saying, put it at the back. Let me take over. Because you can be a Christian for, for 60, 70 years and still be practicalizing Christianity, not getting benefits. Christianity is about allowing spiritual to settle your spiritual and your physical without you being involved. Not of works. You telling God that God take over. But don't be a lazy child of God. Oh. You are not dictating for God. God is dictating for you. That's what we are saying. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Because if God allows us to do it on our own, then it's no more God. We will boast. Then it's, not, it's no more grace. There's no need for the blood of Jesus. There's no need for the spirit of grace, the Holy Spirit. We are going to boast. So God does not want it that way. That was why he did it in his own way. Because he doesn't want any of us to take or share his glory. That is why he says, cast your burden upon me. For I, for Jesus himself says he will care for us. He didn't say go and resolve it yourself. He didn't say pray to yourself. He said pray to the father. Because that's where the grace to do, to answer the prayer you cannot answer for yourself, I can't answer for myself, can come from. May God empower us in the name of Jesus. So the Holy Spirit functions as an enabling power. Or as the spirit or power of grace in us to help us to achieve what we cannot achieve. He can only pray or we can only pray and receive results if we allow the Holy Spirit to control, to direct our lives. I want you to start putting that into action. We can only pray with results and power when we allow the Holy Spirit to be in control. Two things must happen in the child of God's life. Ability to be able to pray and to receive results. Ability to pray is not even in your hand and my hand. You can't pray. I can't pray. It's just the truth. If you are trying to pray, and you are not receiving results. You are doing it by yourself. That is of works. <laughs> Some, hello, somebody. All the years you've been praying, no result. You've been doing, you are in the ministry of, of what? Of works. The day you will sack yourself, I will sack myself out from the ministry of works and will allow the spirit of grace to take over then you begin to see results. Let's see Romans chapter 8. If you look at all your efforts, my effort for the year, outside the Holy Ghost, you will see that it's always zero. 
But anytime we allow the Holy Spirit to take charge, you see that we get results. True or false? Romans chapter 8, we are reading 26 to 27. It says, likewise the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. That is if you allow him. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Even when they train us how to call prayer point. Prayer point is so, is so static and dry. Because what is troubling you, you don't have a word of prayer language. Prayer sentence for. Am I right somebody? You want to pray. You want to intercede. You are looking for a word to qualify or to exchange with your problem before God. To be able to explain from your heart to God. Father, this is what I've been going through for 10 years. There is no word you, you are looking for that can actually explain it to God. At that level, you are weak. Is that not? Bible refers to us as our infirmities. Where you cannot really express what you are going through in the natural or even in the spirit before a spirit God if you are no more in charge hand it to the Holy Spirit I will tell you how you are going to handle this how to hand, hand these things to the Holy Spirit that's why the Bible is saying likewise the spirit also helps when you do the handing the helper, the comforter will take over he is the only one that can commune our weaknesses, our pain to God the Father. We can't really commune ourselves to God. Anytime you go on your knees, you are praying. Say, Lord, I'm going through so many things in life. Help me. No matter how 100% you concentrate on that prayer, you are still distracted 100% before God. But when the Holy Ghost takes over you because you have given him, it takes charge of your spirit. Your spirit begins to commune. Your flesh is just there. You will just see somebody only crying on his knees. It's not him. The Holy Spirit is crying through him to the Father. You see somebody groaning in prayer. It's not him or her. The Holy Spirit is groaning in deep intercession to be on behalf of the person to God the Father. We've done a lot of plastic Christianity. Mechanical way of communing with God. That is why we cannot touch the heart of God. You know your pain. I know my pain. You know what you want in life. I know what I want. The father can see it. But in this something that should be a medium to be able to bring that thing to the heart of God, our flesh cannot do it. That's why when Jesus says, I'm going, there's somebody that will help you. Bring you closer to God to receive results from your prayer. And that is the spirit of grace or the Holy Spirit. Say, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. That is true. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us. The Spirit of grace, the Holy Spirit makes intercession, begin to pray for us with groanings which cannot be altered, which cannot be altered, cannot be changed. On your own, on my own, we say what we stop halfway. Five minutes prayer, we are tired. The need will wake you up from the ground after 30 minutes. You don't know what to do again. The next thing you open your eye, you begin to pray. Sometimes we begin to say things that are not part of the prayer. And we open our eye, we begin to look. Say, ah, this is one hour. Now, part of the prayer, we begin to look at time. Is that not so? You'll be remembering that you've not eaten. Though you are praying. No, that is works. When the Holy Spirit takes over you and I in prayer, all those things are shut down. That's what God wants us to start doing now. Now, he who searches the hearts. No one can search your heart like the Holy Ghost. And bring it before God. He who searches the hearts. Knows what the mind of the spirit is. Your spirit has a mind that is troubled. My spirit has a mind that is under caged. I can't explain it to my parents or to a friend what I'm going through. 
But when you submit before the divine director, you hand yourself before the counsel and your, the controller of your destiny, the Holy Ghost. It takes the spirit in the mind that is being afflicted, that is being worried, that is concerned, and bring it in prayer before God. That's when we receive results. Do we understand that now? Say, he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the spirit is. Every mind has a spirit. When your mind is troubled, your spirit will be weak. Your flesh will be weak. Your spirit will be willing to come to church, but you will stay at home. You know why? Your mind is troubled. Embittered mind. And that thing is repeating itself. It's because you are looking for solution by works. For your mind in the spirit, you can't get solution. When you hand over that mind in your spirit to the Holy Ghost, that's when solution comes. You can be in tribulation, but there will be an inward joy speaking to your ear that your father has answered this prayer. That is the connection and the relationship with the Holy Ghost. Many of us are not encountering. We are not enjoying. So we are every day as mechanical world Christians. We wake up, we don't know the future. We can't detect the present. We cry over our past. And we fold our hands every day in bitterness because we are directing the Holy Ghost, not the Holy Ghost directing us. Hello, somebody. Yes. Say, I've learned something today. Because he makes intersection for the saints. Who is this he we are referring to here? Say it very loud. And what did I say? Another name of the Holy Spirit is. No, a major word. What did I say? Another name of the Holy Spirit is. The Spirit of Grace. Bible says he makes intersection. This Holy Spirit is inside the mind of your spirit. Kneeling down. Praying for you. You will see the effect on your mouth. That's what we call speaking in tongues. When your prayer enters another level, the language of your prayer will change. In groaning, in deep supplications, in tongues, differently. Everything about you will change. You will be weeping, crying. You are cut off completely from the flesh. The Holy Spirit carries you into the spirit and presents the mind of your spirit to God. Lord, see what she's crying about. See what he's concerned about. Interceding for you. Your mouth will just be moving like that of Sister Hannah. You don't know. People say you are drunk. You don't know why you are rolling on the ground. You don't know why you are saying you don't know. You are completely out of the flesh. The Holy Spirit is interceding your mind in the spirit of God. He's the only one that can do it that knows how to reach God without problem. And when that comes, God opens his ears. Say, comforter, who is this person? Look at that. He makes intercession for the saints. You must be a saint for this to happen. Not a sinner. And this intersection of prayer, the Holy Spirit prays in our mind, in the spirit, taking the mind of the spirit of God, must be according to the will of God. So you tell the Holy Ghost, as a brother who has a wife that you need another wife, that's not a problem in the mind of your spirit. What actually made that not to be a problem is already marked with sin. There cannot be groaning in the spirit. There cannot be intercessory for the Holy Ghost because it's not according to the will of God. It has what? The imprint of sin already. The Bible says what? Monogamy, not polygamy. Then you are 13 years, you are asking God for a, a, limo, a, a Lamborghini car. Can't be in the will of God because 13 years cannot manage a very expensive car like that. Are we understanding that now? It must be according to the will of God. 
and God must approve it through the Holy Spirit that is according to my will. Then it delivers immediately. How do you allow the Holy Spirit? How do you and I allow the Holy Spirit? You don't lead. He must lead. Hello, somebody. Let me give you a clear example. Anything you want to do in this life, while you are waiting patiently to hear the voice of God, first and foremost, bring it in prayer to God. Tell God about it and wait for some time before you venture. If you go ahead of God, you are in the ministry of works. Not in the ministry of grace. Tell God about it. Do not lead. Let the Holy Spirit lead. That is how you allow the Holy Spirit to be in control. You allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. And how do you do, allow the Holy Spirit to lead you? You be in total obedience to his voice. You be in what? Total obedience to the voice of the Holy Spirit. Not only that, you are also in surrenderance to his trust and loyalty. People called you on the phone and say, sister, sister, you are still praying. Tomorrow they are closing the thing. They are closing the thing. Are you not coming? Are you not coming? You better come and take your own. You said, I want the Holy Spirit to direct me. Because I don't just want to take that thing. If I take it and I pay the money, I'm a loss. I may lose my money. Is that not? If it is something that you will not get your money back. Some people are saying, you better come. Today is the last day for the form. We have paid our own $10,000 to get it. You said, I want to wait. When you release or when there is a total surrenderance to his loyalty. His loyalty is that you are seeing him as your God. And your father to advise you and in total trust waiting upon him in trust in trust that whether they close it to they don't close it to I need to talk to my father first for direction when your position is like that the Holy Spirit leads you he will tell you son go and invest buy the phone daughter or son don't invest. Keep your money. Go and buy the other phone. The voice of the Holy Spirit in our intercessory, in our prayers, and the direction we get from him is the one that we, never, we will never regret. Check out other areas of your life. Anytime you allow the Holy Spirit to take charge, it always ends up beautifully. He is a controller and a director of our lives, you must allow him to control and direct your life. He will take charge of your prayers. He will take charge of our thoughts. He will take charge of our needs, our worries and anxiety, our feelings. He takes charge. These things are in the mind of the spirit that you cannot control. That's what he does. He is the comforter and intercessor of on, on, our, on, on, be, on, our, on our behalf before God. The, in, the what? The intercessor and the comforter on behalf of us before God. So, you want to comfort yourself when you know you don't have the power of grace in you. It's not possible to get comfort. Hello somebody. Even in your prayer. Very difficult to pray because the spirit of grace is not allowed to take charge. So the Holy Spirit becomes our comforter intercessor on our behalf to God the Father. Now this is where I need you to pay deep attention. How can the power of the Holy Spirit or what can the power of the Holy Spirit do for you and I? 13 major reasons why the Holy Spirit is our most qualified person
to help us in prayers. 13 major reasons why the Holy Spirit Can we tell those people there to turn on the AC, please? 13 major reasons why the Holy Spirit is the most qualified person to help us in our prayers. 13. I want you to listen because you're going to be blessed through this. Number one. Holy Spirit is our weapon in prayer. And weapon of warfare. What did I say? Holy Spirit is our weapon in prayer. See, any power attacking you and now, the weapon in prayer is the Holy Spirit. That is the God for this end time, for this age. Because that's the person Jesus has put in place for us. And it's the weapon of our warfare. We already read it in John 14, 16. The Holy Spirit releases three things to us. Listen everybody. Holy Spirit being the weapon in prayer and the weapon of our warfare. When you are going through challenges in life, there are three things the Holy Spirit will release in you if you have always indulged yourself with these three things. Number one, he gives you the spirit of prayer. What did I say? The spirit of prayer. He does something with the word of God. The second one is he does something with what? The word of God. And the third one, it does something with power. So, any time you want to defeat an enemy, you are praying against a strong man, ask yourself, what are these three things are alive in you? What are the three things? Say, church. Spirit of prayer. Uh huh. The word of God. The third one. Power. If these three things are alive in you, any forces of darkness that come your way, you will pull them down. I will explain. The Holy Spirit releases the spirit of prayer, the word of God, and power into our spirit and our lives. That is if you allow him. The day you gave your life to God, you have the Holy Spirit. From that time, you begin to do something. Start reading the word of God. The word of God you have in you is what the Holy Spirit will use for you. The lesser the word of God, the lesser your victory. The more the word of God, the bigger your victory. And the better your relationship with God. You cannot actually give what you don't have. Who actually gives you the grace to read the Bible is the, word of, is, is the Holy Spirit because it's the spirit of grace. But when you have received him, most of the time we quiet him. We sit him down. We take control of him. We tell him that I want to do it. Wait behind. Let me follow my flesh. Anytime we are using the, we are doing things for ourselves and the one who should be helping us is not doing it, we're not going to read the Bible. We're not going to have this gift of the spirit of prayer. And there is not going to be power. We don't know how and what to pray, but he teaches us. He gives us all chances and directions where we cannot actually express ourselves or know what to pray. So that's why we need him. Some of people have told me in the past that they are struggling to pray. If they close their mouth, their mouth looks heavy or bitter. They don't know what to say. What they need to do is to surrender their, the mind of their spirit to the spirit of grace, to the Holy Spirit. To begin to lead them, not them leading the Holy Spirit. Then he will give them the gift of the spirit of prayer. When you receive the spirit of prayer, you will also receive the spirit of what? Assimilation or reading of the word of God. It's a gift. The Holy Spirit will also give it to you. Number two, he releases the word of God that we have learned and memorized into our spirit in warfare against the forces of darkness. Against Satan. You see, this is where you utilize grace wisely. It was grace that helped us to know God. Is that not? That small grace to know God, to be a born again Christian, 
The attitude of it is that you should read the Bible of whom you have accepted so that your relationship can be what? Can be what? Better with him. When we don't do that, in the spirit realm, in warfare, we cannot be able to defeat anything. Now I ask, how many of us have plenty of verses from the Bible we have memorized that is in our spirit? The mind of your spirit. That's where the word of God you, you read and you memorize. You put there. How many of us have up to like 20 uh, memory verses in our spirit? Raise up your hand. 20. Do you know the past you are fighting, they can recite all the nine satanic book, satanic Bible. Even they even know your, the, your own Bible better than you and I. Because they are reading it. When the Holy Spirit wants to fight for you, he has to see his light there. The light is the word of God. He has to see his life there. The life is the life of Jesus. This is in John, the book of John chapter 1. He has, he has, the Holy Spirit has to see what? The word that is sharper than two edges sword. The things that grace has made you to have in born again experience. If it's not there, the word of God has two, has a two edges sword. You can't defeat any enemy. So every day on your knees, release yourself and ask the Holy Spirit to increase graces in you to be able to read the Bible and memorize. Because that's what you will need for warfare. We speak the word at the control and direction of the Holy Spirit. Say for example, you are attacked in your dream. You just got up from the attack. You want to fight back. You will lack a lot of words if you are not in the ocean of the grace of the Holy Spirit. True of us. When you come out and you are the one that is swallowed in and out of the world, verses, memory verses will be coming out of your mouth. The Bible says, you will, all will be, in fact, as you finish this one, another one will come. As you finish this one, another one will come. It's not you speaking. The enabling power, the Holy Ghost, is speaking through what he has helped you through grace to memorize that is in the mind of your spirit. That is what destroys the enemy. That is what quickens the dead. That is what causes darkness to be exhumed instantly. Again, I said, it's not something you struggle with. It's something God gives us if you allow him to take charge. Tell God how weak you are. How you try to read the Bible and you are sleeping every now and then. How you want to open the Bible and you'll be yawning. Just ask the Holy, Holy Spirit. These are my weaknesses. Take over. It's not your work. It's his work. That's why Jesus sent him. The day he takes over. That's why I was complaining yesterday. See, so all of us, our gift is not sharpened because the Holy Ghost is not leading us. We are the ones singing, not the Holy Ghost singing through us. Hello, somebody. We preach, not the Holy Ghost preaching through us. Hello, somebody. There is no result. We do deliverance, not the Holy Ghost doing the deliverance through us. Hello, somebody. There will not be a result. We marry, not the Holy Ghost leading us, leading the marriage. There will be a problem. We do business, not only because doing the business for us, there will be a problem. That's why we are not growing. That's why our spiritual life is stagnant. Because you are doing it, not the Holy Ghost doing it. So, doing it, you don't obtain grace because you're going to boast when you get results. And God does not want you to boast because you are not God. He wants the Holy Ghost to do it so that he will take the glory, not you. That's the essence of Christianity. Holy Ghost doing it for us, not we doing it. For God to take the glory. We speak the word of God at the control and direction of the Holy Spirit. He activates the word of God as weapon in our mouth. Jeremiah 5, 14 says our enemy is wood. The word in our mouth is fire. And the wood is what? Consumed. Why would word in our mouth consume the enemy? Because that word has received power. The Holy Spirit is the one using the word. Your word alone cannot destroy any, any mammy water, any marine spirit. No. 
So most of the prayer we pray is our word. It's not going anywhere. Unless the Holy Spirit lead the word. Inside us. And that word that comes from our mouth, it paralyzes the forces of darkness and our problems that are confronting our lives. We must depend on the Holy Spirit for the right scriptures to use. Depend on the Holy Spirit for the right scriptures to use. Not you will be saying things. Holy Spirit giving you the right scripture at the right time to bring down the strong man. Without power, we will be very weak and helpless in spiritual warfare. You see Acts 10, 38 that Jesus went about doing great things because power was on him. Let's see Acts 10. Verse 38. Acts chapter 10, verse what? It says how Jesus, how God anointed Jesus Christ. What do you think is that anointing? It's the spirit of grace and that's the Holy Ghost. How, Jesus, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil for God was with him. Listen, Jesus may not be able to do anything unless God has anointed him with the spirit of grace. That's the example of all Christians. God has to put something on you for you to do the extraordinary. Hello, somebody. Luke 5, 17. Luke 5, what? 17. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem and the power of the Lord and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Look at that. The power of God in him was present to heal them. When last did the power of God in you and I, you enter a place and people begin to scream, witches begin to scream. We don't see those things again because we, we, the Holy Spirit is not leading us. Through the power of the Holy Spirit in us, we battle the kingdom of darkness and we defeat them. You and I become the channel of his power to cause the name of Jesus to be glorified here on earth. The Holy Spirit gives us divine power that reflects in our natural as well as our supernatural. The Holy Ghost gives us divine power that reflects in our natural as well as our supernatural. God knows we are in the natural. He gives us divine power to let people know that we are exceptional. God knows also that we exist in the spirit realm because there are forces that will fight us in the spirit realm. He gives us supernatural power to confront those powers for those powers to know that we also belong to the, to the supernatural. This message is going to be in two parts. We are going to go into the Holy Ghost now. And just to let you know, how can we pray with the help of the Holy Spirit? How can we pray with the help of the Holy Spirit? The only way the power of the Holy Spirit can do anything for you and I is to pray in the Holy Spirit. And what is it to pray in the Holy Spirit? Is to pray in tongues. Is to what? Pray in tongues. First Corinthians 14. You might sit here and say, well, I don't have the gift. No, when you start praying, and you, you allow the Holy Spirit to take control. The Holy Spirit begins to pray with, in, out of you. Though you are speaking the English, the Holy Spirit is praying out of you still. Those who have the gift of the evidence of speaking in tongues, you will see the Holy Spirit now will take it from them and pray. It's the Holy Spirit that gives the enablement to speak, not them speaking. You can't speak on your own. That thing is speaking for you is what gives you a result. But if you are speaking, speaking in tongues on your own, you get nothing. 1 Corinthians 14. That will be part B of this message. 1 Corinthians chapter what? 14. Let's read 14 to 15. Are we there now? 1 Corinthians 14. I read from verse 14 to 15. Say, for if I pray in a tongue, 
my spirit what? Prays. Do you see that now? If I pray in tongue, my spirit what? Prays. But my understanding is unfruitful. He says, I don't know what I'm saying. None of us know what we are saying here unless God gives you the gift of the interpretation of what? Tongues. Your spirit is the one praying. The spirit, the spirit of God takes charge of your spirit and pray those words. In the language you may not understand. Others may not or may understand. But you will not know what you are saying. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit and I will also sing with the understanding. This uh, uh, St. Paul is going to another level. Say, I will not only ask God to give me the gift of, this, of speaking in tongues, the gift of the Holy Spirit, I also want the gift of the interpretation of what I am saying. Rise up on your feet now. Ask God for mercy. Say, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon my sins. I repent from them in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon my sins. I repent from them in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Have mercy upon me. I repent from my sins in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we repent. You are here. This message has a lot to do with you. Put your right hand on your chest. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner, a backslider. I've failed you. I've always taken control of my life. And I've left you at the back. I repent from my sins. Forgive me, O oh Lord. Take my name out from the book of condemnation. Write my name, O oh Lord, in the book of life. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me. In Jesus' name we pray. You are going to sing this song and when you start singing it, the Holy Ghost shall come on you and begin to speak in the language of heaven. Begin to speak in tongues. I want you to pray in tongues for the next three minutes and the Lord himself, the spirit of the Lord shall take charge of all your worries, my worries for solution, for results in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, move now. Make my life whole again. Spirit, move over me. Blessed Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, sing it very loud, very loud, and make sure you connect now. This is not the time to distract yourself. Throw away anything mechanical. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Baptize of the Holy Ghost. Appear, 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 appear. In the name of Jesus. Let the baptize of the Holy Ghost. God Jesus appear. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Appear. Appear. To the mind of our spirits. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy 
this message for our freedom and our redemption I pray as many that have laid their hand upon them, upon their chest release upon them the spirit of grace release upon them the Holy Spirit every mechanical war built around them including myself that has void relationship and communication with you let such war crumble to dust in the name of Jesus the power and the spirit that is troubling you with this problem by the spirit of God the spirit of truth by the power of the Holy Ghost let that spirit and that problem the power behind that problem be destroyed out of our lives out of your lives out of my lives in the name of Jesus to be able to pray power to receive instant results receive it now in the name of Jesus as you come out of this place your mountain that thing that makes you to be crying that thing that is delaying the power of God the presence of God the testimony of God in your life you shall no more see that mountain in the name of Jesus you are delivered we are delivered. We are free. We are redeemed. We are victorious. We possess our possession. So it is. In Jesus' name we are blessed. Clap for Jesus. Bring out your offering. Father, we thank you for what you have done in this part one of this message and the great things, the open of heavens over our lives with an open heart of joy we say thank you, accept our offering bless it and bless us we cover our offerings with the blood of Jesus every hand dear Father bless them those who don't have provide for them, we will never lack we will never beg for bread we will not die before the appearance of our breakthroughs in Jesus name we pray Happily give it to God. Enjoy. Aha. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. 
favor ceaselessly in the name of Jesus. Whatever you put your hand to do this week, this is the sign. Whatever you put your hand to this to do this week, you will prosper with results in the name of Jesus. That person that was spoken to concerning your life yesterday, that shall be open heaven financial favor. The one you have never ever witnessed before. This favor, financial, this financial favor shall embarrass you in the name of Jesus. I cover everyone's hands here with the blood of Jesus. I soak our blessings with the blood of Jesus. We run into the name of Jesus, we strong to and we are sealed here. No weapon fashion against us shall ever prosper. So it is. Lord, we cover all our children in school with the blood of Jesus. The gunners and the shooter of soul. The killer and the, the and the hunters of soul shall never locate any of our children, neither us as parents, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for seeing your mighty protection upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's share the grace in fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy of God shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Let's remember to answer to the contribution for our uh, powerful uh, conference that is coming as you give the Lord bless us mightily in Jesus' name. Give God one victory. Hallelujah. Ha! God bless